this black composition notebook. This was my piano lesson journal uh, from 1981 to 1984. My teacher at that time, William Leland, uh, each week wrote down what I played and then he writes down his sort of detailed and often witty commentary on my progress or lack thereof. Uh, each week it's, it's just, you know, what I played and then, you know, sometimes very brief comments. And he sort of took this great uh, approach to the, you know, usually teachers put little uh, stars to indicate your progress, but he drew all the stars. Some of them are, are happy stars, some of them are quite miserable stars, some of them are falling asleep there. Sometimes they're dancing with joy. Um, a sort of bodybuilder star, and there's a Superman star. There's a little moon, actually, that says, pretty good kid, he's smoking a cigarette. And there's the famous uh, check that he wrote me for one million dollars from the Screwball Bank of West Burlap for finally remembering to play this accidental that I kept forgetting. And then, of course, you just see him, you know, assigning me, there's a great place where he assigns me these exercises that I hated, conus exercises, um, which are about finger independence. And after the first week he says, these must be done slowly with precision with the brain. And then there's a little diagram of Jay Dank, and me with my ears, and there's a, there's a little arrow to my head. And then in the middle there's a tiny little pinprick that's my brain. And, uh, but then, luckily, by next week, it, there's another diagram. His brain colon has grown a little. Then the week after, there, my brain is almost starting to fill my head. Even I have a little hair on my head, which is comforting, actually. And then the next, <laughs> the next page, there's a drawing of himself fainting, plop, on the floor. Piano teacher fainting because student didn't miss any ties. Well, this, so yeah, there's like a little, there's little mini narratives scattered through the whole thing. My conscious attention was the main, main sort of obsession. He was, uh, you know, obviously a very detail-oriented teacher. He, and it's like each week you see this sort of attempt to, uh, to make me more um, meticulous. It's, it's a real, it's kind of very uh, affecting to me of this sort of crucial period of my life when I basically decided to be a pianist without kind of knowing it. And you can see the sort of seriousness growing in it. Six years later, I met another teacher who was from a completely different school in a different world. I remember the first moment that I heard George Shebuck uh, when he came to Oberlin to give a recital in a, in a class. And it was a very formative moment in my life. He was such an alien, uh, landed in the middle of Oberlin. It was like kind of a close encounters of the third kind moment because he was, first of all, unlike everyone in Oberlin, extremely well dressed and he smoked from this long handled cigarette. He looked like Yoda. He was, and he played, I never forget the Bach that he played, which I try to describe in the piece. It's very hard to describe this kind of alchemy of, of an amazing performance but I've instantly sort of fell under his spell and I sort of knew from the moment that I heard him that I was going to go study with him because I, I felt this kind of sense of that there was a truth there to the way he was talking about music that I had not yet fully absorbed in my life and that I needed. I was like 20 years old and I mean of course I, I loved music but there was something also about him that made me know a little more profoundly why and then when he would play he had this way of communicating to you the the reason why this old style, why this language was so eloquent, why, and why the smallest difference in how you inflected a phrase made the world. Uh, he basically, at moments of doubt, he always stepped up and made sure that I knew what I was about. And I don't in the piece go into the moments when he said those sort of very special things to me that made me want to continue. I remember once he came back uh, after I played a recital and it was on Super Bowl Sunday and so no one no one came, and it was him and his wife that came backstage, and he said, now that was a real Super Bowl. <laughs>